So I think the next uh, order of business is to figure out what the next order of business is. <laughs> because we've got a lot of complex things going on. Um, and we need to update our logic to, um, you know, either either we either we get the logic working for actually placing um, a stone. So if I click over here, it should go on top of that stone as a legal move, and then end end our move because we placed the only stone in our grasp. But a lot of our um, a lot of our logic is hard coded at occupants needing to be one um, so that we know what stone to render at our mouse position. So there's a bunch of little details we need to sort of change and figure out how it's going to work. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where to start. Um, we need to come up with some sort of some sort of class or sort or actually uh, I don't know it's like we've got we've got a class called occupant that holds a table called members of um member type instantiations so maybe the move is if there's more than five stacked on top of one another then if we if we're in a move type move and we click on a stack in our control then we we kind of duplicate the top five of that stack as another occupant with all the corresponding members, right? Um, see, and then the rendering is going to be different and tricky, so... It's really tough to kind of think about what needs to happen there, because... We need to be able to keep track of multiple objects, multiple members, which we do in our occupant class, but we need to do that on top of our mouse cursor once we click on it so that we can um, render all of those. Now, I don't necessarily think that as we drop off stones, the, uh, the render needs to dynamically resize to the appropriate size for our stones left. So, So that should save us a little bit of a headache there, but we we still need to figure out the move uh, for how how many stones we decide to pick up. I'm kind of thinking that the way to do it is to pick up the max amount of stones from that space. So if it's one, just pick up one. If it's five or more, just pick up five, and then you arrow key. Um, either left or right or up and down or whatever to kind of drop stones um, that you don't want to move. So it's like if you just want to move one stone but there's seven stones there you have to click the stack in your control five will go on your mouse, or mouse cursor then you have to drop off four say four, you know, less, 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 less um, so that you only have one stone then you move it in the available uh, orthogonal space uh, then that ends your turn. Um, I feel like that might be the way to do it, because I feel like it's a little confusing to click the stack that's in your control. Let's say there's seven stones or whatever. You click the stack, then one one stone, the top stone comes up. Then, then we would have to... Well, then you can... Uh, mouse over to depend or to pick up more stones that you're going to move and then you move them but 
yeah, I don't know. In the game, in the game when you're moving, you kind of pick up five and go bop, 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 and you kind of drop them. So I feel like to mimic that in the game is kind of like, well, you pick up five, you know, you don't pick up one and then pick up two and then pick up three and then pick up four. You pick up five and then you, you drop them or, or, or whatever. Like, I feel like it's probably the move to, to pick up everything that's, that you can decide how many you're going to drop off in that current space before you move and then lock in your move. And then we also need to lock in our move direction. On that first move, you can only continue to move in that direction if it's a legal move. So we'd have to do some more grid arithmetic to lock in, you know, our, our direction if it's a legal move. Otherwise, end of move and switch person. That's going to be really confusing. I know it is. <laughs> um, I don't even know where to start. I really don't know where to start. Um, and I know stuff's going to start to break once we start to... And pop out these things. Yeah, we, we also need to do a complete reset too. So we don't have to quit the game and redo it just to test another instance or something. Maybe we figure that out. We're dead today. So look at this. steps um, yeah moving move type move is like infinitely more complicated than place um, see right here oh this is place but in their move right here see these are locked in at members one. This is locked in at occupants one. Um, I really don't know what to do. I guess, uh, Maybe, maybe let's just try to figure out how to reset the stones um, for today, because I'm gonna give myself a headache trying to think of the other stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm, it's just it takes time to kind of wrap my head around what the game looks like and what making the game looks like. Um, and it's so complex that the next step is gonna be. A decent work session and I don't have a ton of energy for it tonight. So I guess let's do when we press R when we press R we're giving our grid an empty table, populating them with default occupants, giving us space for 10 members, and this is all the same as up here. It's like what we do at the beginning. 
but I guess we also need to kind of... Actually, yeah, that should... Does that not work? So if I press R... 438 fails. Looks like that's working. Now the thing is, why would why would this fail upon an R press? Yet it doesn't fail when we just launch it. It just launches fine, but then when we reset it, that's when it busts. So something in our members table isn't getting wiped. Uh, we need to wipe all of our members. But I thought we are doing that. When we press R, yeah, we wipe O. We just wipe members 1. So instead of wiping members 1, wipe members K. And then we should be able to keep rendering those and not crash. Okay, cool. Well, that it doesn't really... Uh, constitute a commit. <laughs> I, I didn't think we would uh, fix that so fast. We had, we had already done the work in a previous episode. It was just uh, busted. Yeah, we had it fixed here with the K, but we didn't have it fixed here. We still had a members one locked in. So at least we can do that. Um... I feel like we should render all members, right? There's what, a max of 10 members? Yep, max of 10 members. And we're gonna say in this loop, just render every member. One through ten. Okay, I'm gonna turn on this real quick so that I can see if we are in fact rendering more than one member. Thirty eight again. We've got to do an IJK here. So. Because we need to render every member in every grid, not just every member in this weird. Yeah, this is. Uh, for J gets 1, come on, 10. Do. And then for. A nested, oh, actually, and this is just five. There's only a grid of five by five, so I and J are five, but K is ten for ten members. And members K. Nice, we're rendering those members over here. And we do have stack control, so we can highlight it. We're over it. Okay. Um, I 
No, that wasn't a lot to program today. I'm not trying to go for an hour programming every day, just trying to build up that habit of programming every day. And we did fix some functionality. Um, see right here. Well, no, this this is okay for the members to be locked in at one for place. It's that when we move it to move, we need to not do this. We need to figure out uh, if move type is move. It's a legal highlight and occupants is one and not first. Jesus. Then we need to become not occupied. Shoot, it's really weird. There's so many things to think about trying to implement this for picking up more than one stone. Because this is, this is if the occupants are one. But what's the difference between an Occupants 1 and an Occupants 2, for example? And that shouldn't be Legal Move Highlight, it should be Legal Move. Now, Legal Move Highlight should be legal. A legal Move Highlight should be true if it's a Legal Move, but this shouldn't be based on the Legal Move Boolean, not the Legal Move Highlight Boolean. I'm thinking. <laughs> Let me see if that messes up anything. It does. Why? Why would that mess it up? Why do we have to be a legal move? Highlight, not just a legal move. Wow, it's getting real complex. It is a legal move. It is a legal move. Um, unless, you know what, before we, before we lock in our, yeah, when, I don't think the highlight, what are we doing? Are we doing the uh, initial legal move highlight if no movement locked? We do ask if it's a legal move, though. This is very, very confusing to look at for me now. Um, why is it that we don't remove a stone if it's a legal move? Hold on a sec. Let's let's test that it's a legal move when it's we've got stack control move type move. Ooh, see, look, legal move is not true here. Now we are rendering the legal move highlight, uh, but I thought that was dependent on whether it was a legal move or not. So something's going on here. Now if it's move, no movement locked. Legal move highlight is true. See, we need to say legal move is true. And then if it's a legal move, we make the legal move highlight true. Not currently doing. So we're saying legal move gets true. Um, we probably don't need this here. We probably should do this where anything that's a legal move gets highlighted when we're hovering over it. But for right now, we'll just say legal move gets true, move gets true, legal move gets true, 
Okay. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. This isn't it because we're we're already checking if it's legal move. What is happening here? Just under stack control, we need to do it. Not here. So not here, but just under the stack control. So let's see if we're now a legal move when we hover over those spots. Uh, legal move is true. Yep, it's still rendering appropriately. Still disappearing and then rendering appropriately, but we need to now say not legal move highlight up here, but just legal move. Just because it doesn't really make sense to control that based on the highlight. I mean, the highlight's controlled on the legal move, so it should be the same effect. I just don't like that idea. Okay, cool. Okay. Um... All right, um, what next? So yeah, like, what's the difference? So if the stone stack order is one, two, three, four, five, if there's, for example, two occupants, then once we click, depending on our logic, you know, if occupants is smaller than five, then we're actually going to pick up all the occupants. We're going to make the grid where we just left not occupied anymore. We need to move those occupants to our mouse render, which right now we're just doing. What? Render stone right here just see yeah this is jacked because right now all we're doing to render the stone selection at our mouse position is we're basically just duplicating whatever our render is in here you know remember yeah see the stone type rectangle fill we're just doing that here uh which is not what we want to do. We like we have all the info already upon the click. We just need to transfer it. So it's like we need to copy all the occupant table values into another. Either we need another class to kind of track this, or we just do local variables because there should only be um, there should only be one instance of mouse objects at a given time so we can just modify it based on when we click and then when we drop and when we move i guess either that or we do we implement another class that can hold a bunch of stones just like an occupant can but it's only for the mouse that way we keep it separate but what's really tricky is I'm thinking, yeah, what's really tricky. Well, no, it isn't that tricky. I'm thinking, you know, if the stone stacks are one, two, three, four, five, we pick up five and then we go to drop one. We drop, you know, um, member one. And then um, we would have to stop rendering member one because we're less occupants or whatever. But then, um, less members. Then this bottom one is no longer members one, it's still members two. But then we drop members two. Then we have a stack of three, but it's not members one on the bottom, it's members three. Because we're... It's holding that info for the appropriate member of stone type and stone color. But it is no longer the, uh the bottom index, the number one index. It depends on how many we dropped in the previous moves. But I think we can just keep track of that in in our 
local variables for, for mouse stones, I think. Getting complicated, getting complicated. But yeah, this, this all needs to go. Like we need to, this all needs to become rendering based on mouse stone class or local variables. I think we can get away with not having it a class. Um, just don't know if that's a good idea. I, I don't know. I'm still learning. Oh, shit, man. Okay. Yeah. Well. It's getting tricky. got a vague idea of what needs to happen, but implementing those things are going to switch up um, the things that are currently working, and then I know it's going to break, and then it's going to be a little frustrating. So I'm going to give myself a clean slate to start. You know, this is a nice starting point um, to, to snapshot our git commit right before we kind of rehaul our move type move logic to include more than one stone. And we can do it so that we still start with making sure it ends up working for one stone, making sure our logic is sound um, for something that's scalable to more than one stone, but have it still work for, yeah, have it still work for one stone. Um, it's going to be tough. But this is the meat and potatoes of the game right here. It really is. Um, yeah, the meat and potatoes is like, how do we determine win state? That's the tough. That's the tough one. But then, um, uh, also, also how to move, how to move a stack. Yeah, that's the hardest. That's the meat and potatoes. Once we figure that out, we're basically done, you know? Like, it's basically everything. Because all we have to do is figure out, once we once we lock in the, the movement of a stack, and make sure that's um, not having any bugs, not dropping over any waystones or laystones, then we just have to worry about wind conditions, and then um, score tracking, which is going to be way easier than all of this logic. So, in a way, we're, we're, we're coming up on the home stretch of the logic of this game because there's only two types of moves and we're on the second type of move you can do. So, um, in, in that sense, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of like, not that we're at the last um, sprint, but it's like, we're at the last um, major feature but that major feature just happens to be really big and really complex. It's coming along though, I'm really happy. Um, the other thing I want to entertain is undoing moves. So I think I would like to be able to go through the grid and save all the values and all the stack and the members objects, save it to a table or whatever you want to call it, save it somewhere so that if you do a move and your move's over, um, if you hit Z, you can revert to the last move so we can undo moves. And therefore, you know, if there's a mistake or, or if you just didn't, didn't want to do that move and wanted to undo it, I think that'd be a cool feature. Um, I think that would be really cool to add. So that's like a bonus bonus credit once we get moving, working, and everything. To be able to press Z and revert 
to the last previous move made. I think that would be cool. And then we can add score, and then we can... Then that'll be it. Like, it'll... It's... We're in the home stretch. It's just that the last home stretch is a half marathon. <laughs> Take a look at our git diff. We fixed our members uh, render for our reset. We added legal move upon no movement locked, which wasn't the case. We weren't uh, technically. We were rendering it because we were flipping the legal move highlight, but it wasn't technically a legal move until now. We made it one. And then we uh, we render all the members in our grid now instead of just manually rendering three. And then, uh, yeah, we didn't do too much. But we did fix our reset. Um, we didn't add anything to our reset, but we had it there, actually. We did. So we... Right there, that's that's where the reset is, I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, get add everything with the commit message saying fixed reset state or fixed reset button. Did legal move true upon no movement locked. Cool. We'll get push it to origin main and call it a day. It's not a not a big glorious glamorous day, but um, it is a day in the books. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow and. Tomorrow's gonna be, yeah, tomorrow's gonna suck. Not suck, it's just, it's just a lot of work. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, yeah, call it a day. Thanks for watching.